<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, truckers and not a trucker but, people. What spooky things did you witness on the road? A trucker I know claims he was driving a logging truck down a remote dirt road in the middle of a forest at around midnight when a dogman creature walked out in the middle of the road. It stared at him for a few seconds plainly visible and well illuminated by all the auxiliary lights on the truck, then it just took off and disappeared into the woods on the other side of the road. He's not a superstitious man and he rejects everything supernatural as fiction, but he 100% believes that what he saw that night was real. I've only heard him talk about this twice, he was very drunk both times he opened up about it. Just talking about it rattled him, he was clearly uncomfortable thinking back about that night. There's the legend of the Michigan Dog Man. I grew up in Dog Man country, my uncle and his friend, both experienced hunters and my uncle special ops for the military, his friend a sheriff's deputy came back up to the house blubbering like babies about a creature in the woods. My uncle's friend took off and over 30 years later still won't even look in anyone in my family's direction let alone speak to us, whatever they saw scared him that badly. My uncle finally got it out to my granny and grandpa that they saw something resembling a Bigfoot but had the head of a dog slash wolf. They unloaded both riffles and both their pistols on the thing and hit it multiple times and the creature just ran off. We have 5,000 acres of land so it is hard to search every inch but my grandpa saw the fear in his son's eyes, told my granny to stay in the house, not to let me or the dogs out, grabbed a few ranch hands, told them to riffle up and saddle up, they were going out in groups to search every inch of the land for this thing, they came back well after dark, cold, tired and hungry. I was about 5 or 6 then so this is all I remember. They found tracks but not the thing. My uncle spent the rest of his life tracking it. He actually died on the same property, in the area where he saw the thing in 2010. He never talked about his experience much but when he did you could see the fear on his face. This is a man that spent 23 years as special forces for the military, he wasn't scared of much but whatever was there terrified him. Many believe it's a skinwalker, some believe it's a type of Bigfoot, others believe it's completely bunk and some don't know what to think. Upper Peninsula of Michigan. I was delivering and installing machines for the company I was working for. I was in a 26 box truck with 12 machines in the back. I was having trouble with the truck the day before, had it checked out by the rental company and they said it was all good. Since I was behind schedule due to the truck and problems with installations, I decided to drive late to my next destination. It was about 11 o'clock at night on a state route through the Upper Peninsula. There were no street lights, there was no other cars. The headlights from my truck were the only thing illuminating the road. I was already creeped out. At the peak of feeling like I was in the middle of nowhere, because I was in fact in the middle of nowhere, every single light on the dashboard of the truck lit up, and then it stalled. Now it's pitch black, I am stopped and the truck isn't restarting. Rather than eat up the battery trying to turn it over, I shut everything down and started making phone calls. As I was calling everyone and anyone that would listen, I sat in the dark night, with the only light being from my hazard lights. I looked up and saw something move in front of the truck, just out of distance of the flashing lights. At first I thought it was my imagination. I finally got a hold of someone and they told me it would be two to three hours before they could get a mechanic to me. So now I am sitting in silence, the only noise is the clicking the hazard lights are making, and I am staring out the windshield into a void of darkness, when I see movement again. Just as I was about to shit my pants, my phone rang and that nearly secured the pants shitting, because it scared the hell out of me. It was a mechanic that wanted me to get out, open the hood, and check some things out. No. I am not getting out of the truck. With an explanation as to why. He was irritated with me, but I didn't care. So finally after seeing the movement just out of range of the lights one more time, I threw on the headlights with the high beams. The headlights caught three wolves snacking on something that looked like roadkill. I honked the horn and they looked at me like they were irritated more than scared. I was safe, the wolves more than likely weren't going to bother me, but it was spooky just knowing they were there. So I shut the lights off. I would turn the lights on occasionally to check to see if they were still there. I was basically just sitting there listening to the hazard flashers click, while surfing my phone. Each time I turned the lights on, the wolves were still there. Just to remind you, I am in the middle of nowhere, no homes, no business, nothing but trees, wilderness, and wolves. I suddenly heard what I can only equate to a woman's scream of terror that sounded like it came from right behind the truck. Then something slammed into the side of the truck, hard enough to rock it. I wasn't afraid of the truck tipping over, but whatever hit it, hit it hard enough to rock the suspension enough to move me around in the cab. It was a pretty heavy truck. I turned every light the truck had on. 
slipped it into reverse so the reverse lights came on and laid on the horn. I was checking both mirrors, and the only thing I saw was a shadow bolt across the road. I couldn't make out what it technically was, but in my head it was werewolf yeti bigfoot lizard monster that was going to end my life and it was going to be agonizingly painful the entire time. I also noticed the wolves were gone. From every nature documentary I've watched, the only time predators leave food is when there are bigger slash badder predators around. By this time I was in full Bobby Hill that's my purse, I don't know you. Mode. Whatever crossed the road, didn't cross very far off the road. I could hear it thrashing around in the brush, breaking sticks and what sounded to be logs. There was no noise pollution, I only had my window cracked a little bit and I could hear pretty well. I basically had the steering wheel gripped, all the lights on, and was feverishly looking out the windows, and through the mirrors to make sure nothing was around the immediate area of the truck. I couldn't see off the road, and the flashlights I had were in the back of the truck in my tool bag. I'd have to get out of the truck to get to them. Finally I saw some headlights through one of my mirrors. It seemed like it took hours for them to close the distance to me. The noise stopped as the headlights approached. It was obviously the mechanic because no one else was stupid enough to be out there besides me. The mechanic pulled out in front of me, my headlights were shining on him and his truck. As his door opened to step out, we both hear the woman screaming in terror yell again and the brush thrashing intensified. Whatever it was, it was still close and pissed. His door immediately closed and my phone rang. He called my phone asking me what it was, he sounded more panicked than me. I had no clue what it was, and he had no clue what it was. So the mechanic called the police. He wouldn't work on my truck until we could secure the area, which I don't blame him. He didn't like my idea of him getting out of his truck, just to check things out. Two Michigan State Police officers showed up. They lit that area up like it was a stadium. I finally stepped out of the truck for the first time since it all started. We heard that scream three more times while the mechanic was working on my truck. Thankfully they were getting further away. The cops had no clue what it was either, they were kind of spooked too. The mechanic finally got my truck running, and I made it to my hotel for the night. The next morning I walked the truck for inspection, and the side that was hit, there was an indentation about the size of a basketball. Whatever hit it, didn't hit it hard enough to push all the way through, but it definitely mushed the fiberglass. The indentation was about 7 off the ground. I have no idea what it was. I probably never will. I do confidently know that I will never ever drive through the Upper Peninsula at night again. That's the spookiest. I used to travel for work doing construction. My boss was driving and I was passenger. We're on our way back home from Tennessee to Illinois. Just leaving the mountains but still pretty much the middle of nowhere and we notice a couple dead deer on the road. These things are like. Exploded. My boss and I say something about that sucks, a semi must have been hauling and clipped a herd. We get to the top of a hill and there are so many more dead exploded deer. Possibly hundreds. Definitely dozens. They didn't look like they got hit by a semi. They looked like they had sticks of dynamite put into them and lit off. Semi trucks had definitely been driving through because we didn't have to dodge any of them. And we were driving our big work truck and trailer so if we had to crush a couple it was no big deal. It went on for more than half a mile. Maybe up to a mile and a half. My boss had been on the road a lot more years than I had. I asked him what the hell was that? And he seemed just as lost as me. Said I have no ducking idea and I'm not stopping to find out. That shit didn't make any sense. Not a trucker however, I have driven across the country multiple times. I watched a man run several people off the road in his old Ford pickup. After calling the police and giving them information he tried to break check me. When I went around him, he had the most sinister smile and huge black eyes. Maybe it was the sun or my mind playing tricks on me but, I will never forget how dark and empty they were. Still gives me the creeps to this day. When I was traveling through East Texas around midnight in the early parts of 2003, a very bright light lit up the sky enough to not have to use the lights on my vehicle, I left my lights on. The traffic on the highway came to a standstill with people pulling off on the side. As soon as I started to do the same, this star-like light flew right over the top of my vehicle without making any noise. It made some very erratic movements then disappeared behind some trees. I was traveling to Florida one night on this really old highway in the middle of nowhere. I had just passed an 18-wheeler and out of nowhere this huge object runs out into my lane. The highway had a very steep embankment on either side so, it either ran really fast or was sitting there for some time on the side. I did not even have enough time to react, it happened so fast. We all think it was an alligator but, it looked like it was shape-shifting right before I hit it. I actually have a video of this incident but, wasn't sure if I could post it here. I was out on the west coast, trying to make a buck, 
and things didn't work out. I was down on my luck. Got tired of roaming and bumming around. So I started thumbing back east, toward my hometown. Made a lot of miles, the first two days, and I figured I'd be home in week, if my luck held out this way. But, the third night I got stranded, way out of town, at a cold, lonely crossroads, rain was pouring down. I was hungry and freezing, done caught a chill when the lights of a big semi topped the hill. Lord, I sure was glad to hear them air brakes come on, and I climbed in that cab, where I knew it'd be warm. At the will sit a big man. He weighed about 210. He stuck out his hand and said with a grin Big Joe's the name, I told him mine, and he said, the name of my rig is Phantom 309. I asked him why he called his rig such a name. He said, son, this old Mac can put them all to shame. There ain't a driver, or a rig, a run in any line ain't seen nothing but taillights from Phantom 309. Well, we rode and talked the better part of the night when the lights of a truck stop came in sight. He said, I'm sorry son, this is as far as you go, cause, I gotta make a turn, just on up the road. Well, he tossed me a dime as he pulled her in low, and said, have yourself a cup on old Big Joe. When Joe and his rig roared out in the night, in nothing flat, he was clean out of sight. Well, I went inside and ordered me a cup, told the waiter Big Joe was setting me up. You could have heard a pin drop. It got deathly quiet, and the waiter's face turned kinda white. Well, did I say something wrong? I said with a halfway grin. He said nah, this happens every now and then. Ever driver in here knows Big Joe. But son, let me tell you what happened about 10 years ago. At the crossroads tonight, where you flagged him down, there was a busload of kids, coming from town, and they were right in the middle, when Big Joe topped the hill. It could have been slaughter, but he turned his wheel. Well, Joe lost control, went into a skid, and gave his life to save that bunch of kids, and there at that crossroads, was the end of the line for Big Joe and Phantom 309. But, every now and then, some hiker will come by, and like you, Big Joe will give him a ride. Here, have another cup, and forget about the dime. Keep it as a souvenir, from Big Joe and Phantom 309. My mom is a trucker, this is her story. She was driving through Arizona when she saw what she thought was leaves blowing across the road in the distance. This puzzled her since there's mostly pine trees in northern Arizona. When she finally got to the leaves she realized that they were migrating tarantulas, one thousands of them. There were so many of them that her truck was sliding on their guts so she had to slow down. She stopped at the first truck stop and told her co-driver to fuel up, he was sleeping at the time, because she wasn't going to step foot outside after what she just saw. Her co-driver was pissed since it was technically his time off, and he thought she was crazy, until he saw the tarantula guts and legs caked in the inside will well of the truck. She also outran a tornado in the Midwest. She was about to pull over and take cover until she saw another big rig that was parked on the side of the road get tossed a couple hundred yards like a toy. She called me and told me that she thought she was going to die and wanted her last words to be I love you to me. She pulled off the freeway and got to a Walmart, where she ran into the basement where all the staff and customers were taking shelter. After the tornado passed, they stepped out of the basement and into daylight, since the Walmart was destroyed. She has many many stories like this. Trucking is 90% boredom, 10% insane shit like this. It was winter, late November early December and about 11 o'clock at night. I was hauling straw up to Cache Creek BC. I was on a small two-lane paved road between Princeton BC and Merritt BC. It had new snow on the ground and I had my driving lights on, these lights were off-road lights so they were very bright. The outside temperature was down below zero. There is a lake nearby where they have an aerator to keep it from freezing over. So standing beside the road at the lake was what I thought a man in black all by himself. Thinking that it was very strange why would anyone be outside this late and in this cold, it didn't make sense. As I had gotten about a quarter of a mile away, I watched him step to the middle of the road and then to the other side. Two lane road, two steps and wondered how did this just happen I started to slow down and turned on the side load lights so I could see better, when I got up there, what I saw wasn't what I thought, I watched it step over a five strand barbed wire fence and stood there looking at me, remember I am in a semi truck and we are looking eye to eye he or she was every bit of 9 to 10 feet tall and covered in hair, I was so scared I left as fast as I could. I was only about 30 feet from it and it had a great look at it. I went home a different way. Went back up a couple days later in the daylight to see if I could find any tracks in the snow but it had snowed too much and everything was covered. Not anything that I would want to see again that close. Not a trucker but I've been on a lot of road trips all over the US. On this particular trip my best friend and I are driving from Western MD to Western KY on short notice because his brother had died. 
We set out at about 8 p.m. and by 10 p.m. we're somewhere in the West Virginia Appalachians and we hit total whiteout blizzard conditions. We're sliding all over the damned road even crawling at 15 miles per hour, but the semis are blowing past doing 60 minimum and their wake is also shoving us toward the guard rail with frightening regularity. I wasn't even driving and it was stressful as hell for me, I can't imagine how bad it was for the driver. Fortunately he's one hell of a driver with lots of experience in snow and ice which is the only reason we made it through intact. By about 7 am the next morning we've come out the far side and we are totally exhausted and in need of gas. We spot a gas station next exit sign up ahead and as we leave the highway we descend into the fog of the smoky mountains. It's not too bad where we are, but occasionally the terrain will fall away on one side of the road or the other and the valley is filled with very dense fog. It's about 50-50 beautiful and creepy early in the morning with the sun barely above the horizon and absolutely no one around. To make matters worse, this town we come into on the service road can't have more than 50 people in it, it's barely more than a post office, a couple stores, and a handful of houses. And two gas stations, so we get our pick, abandoned for at least 10 years, or abandoned for at least 40 years. After seeing the state of the gas stations we looked around and it was pretty clear that the whole town was abandoned, which makes me wonder why there's still a sign on the highway pointing to a gas station here, oh well, gas or no gas we need a break, so we park up in the 10 year lot and get out. We're there for maybe 20 minutes, grab a light breakfast and some refills from the cooler, and the fog is rolling in fast enough that it's getting noticeably harder to see so we get back in the car. As we're pulling out we notice some scraggly looking guy in beat up overalls, no shirt OFC, stand up from behind a short retaining wall looking startled. My buddy rolls down the window to ask him where we can find a gas station but before he can get two words out dude starts screaming bloody murder at the top of his lungs and runs off into the fog. As he's running I notice he's carrying a rifle or shotgun of some variety, and the latter is confirmed as he starts shooting it off apparently at random while screaming like an absolute wild man. I hear at least four shots followed by more slash different screaming, there's at least three people now that I can hear as we are hauling us out of town as fast as that little geo could take us. While the screaming faded pretty quickly the shots echoed through the valley all the way back to the highway. To this day I have no idea what the duck that was about but it thoroughly creeped me out. Today's lesson, don't hang around tiny little towns in the smoky mountains, kids, those rednecks are batshit. Back when I was in high school. It was summer and my dad's birthday so we drove to a casino two hours away to watch a boxing match with my uncle. It finishes and we drive back the same night. We're nearing a canyon with no phone reception, so we call my mom and tell her we'll be home soon, canyon usually takes about 30 minutes with no traffic. It's around midnight. So we enter the canyon and we're all pretty tired. To keep us talking we start telling stories, most of them creepy stories. This goes on for a while and it feels like time is passing in a haze. We pass this butte in the canyon and suddenly I get deja vu. I'm convinced we already passed that before. All of us have driven this canyon a hundred times and know the layout. We keep talking, and then we pass the same butte again. This time I pointed out and my dad and uncle notice the time, it's 1am, and we're still not home. So we all start to get a bit freaked out. We stop talking and just watch the road slowly pass by. Now that we're paying attention though time seems to catch up. We exit the canyon around 1.15 am and call my mom who is freaked out she hadn't heard from us. We still to this day have no idea where that extra 45 minutes or so went. Not a trucker but this story is pretty crazy. Back in my college aged years, mid 90s, I had a band member that went to a college that was about 45 miles from our practice spot. We, our bassist and I, would take turns driving him back to school. One Saturday night it was foggy as hell, and there was a bad accident on the main highway. We decided to take the back roads through rural Washington County, Maryland to go around the accident. So my guitarist, myself, his girlfriend, and a girl I'm dating from his school are driving along, when we see a super bright light cutting through the fog. We are about 3 to 5 miles from Knoxville MD at the time, big bunch of nowhere. We see a farmhouse to our left with what appears to be the brightest light I've ever seen. We pull over, we have no idea what we are looking at. My instinct is to go at this point. My guitar player tells me to wait, and we just try to process what we are seeing. All of a sudden, it moved straight up, slowly at first, and then it just moved so fast it disappeared. We started driving again, not getting terribly excited about what we saw. It was strange, not a single one of us could ask each other about what we just saw. It was eerie as hell. To this day, it's not something I've really ever mentioned. Teleporting, phasing, magically appearing car, it's only ever happened once driving a dust cart. UK. One driver, two crew. 
on approach to roundabout, from dual carriageway. Light traffic, clear visibility early morning. I can see on my approach, up the three roads converging on the roundabout, as well as across the roundabout itself. There's two other vehicles, I'm aware of and I'm tracking, as I plan my own maneuvers, and predict theirs. Coming to an almost stop before the giveaway line, I'm looking out the driver's window at the mirror and past it, nothing, two cars I'd been watching, turned off. Note loaders are looking forward. I'm clear to go, look forward and boom. Third red car, just there. At a snail's pace in front of us, from nowhere, as if we all managed to somehow blink in the same time and somehow miss this bright red car, on a clear day within 1.5 seconds or so. We all kind of just where the duck did that come from in different words, expressions, and waited while it shunted, like someone bouncing on the clutch and then it just went off down the road. I had and have no words, I know what I saw, so do the guys I had working with me. The world skipped a beat and left a car in front of us. Parked off an exit ramp at about 3 a.m. for my 10 hour. The moon was full and high, and I spotted an unmistakably human figure in a nearby cut corn field. A little spooky but I just wrote it off as an old timer putting up a scarecrow for the grandkids. Started watching a few YouTube videos before turning in and out the corner of my vision I though I saw movement. I shut my lights off to get a good look, saw the figure but nothing else. I couldn't be sure, but it looked like maybe it was in a different spot. Maybe a little closer even. I was definitely feeling a bit spooked. Highway was devoid of anyone besides a car passing every 10 minutes or so. I didn't want to, but I had to jump out to pee. I considered a bottle, but I told myself I was being childish. I took a look at the figure and it was right where I figured it should be. I hop out, walk between my truck and trailer and start leaking. Every fiber of my being wanted to look. I told myself again I was being foolish, but I couldn't help it. I looked out. The field was empty the figure wasn't there. My stomach dropped, I pinched off and jumped back in. I took off down the highway, didn't give one shit about a violation. Stopped 40 minutes up the road at a well-lit and very full loves. Haven't stopped on a ramp since. Not a truck driver, but I used to live, and drive, all over the US. I spent one year in Haslett, a tiny town near Fort Worth. Driving home from parties in Dallas, I'd have to follow a lot of small roads with very little traffic. Or maybe my GPS just hated me ha ha. One night in particular was bizarre. It was about 2 AM, I think it was Sunday night. I drove past a cop that was just parked on the side of the road, flashing lights on with no siren, but it was empty. There weren't any other cars parked next to it, and there were no cops. I drove on and saw more of the same. Just. Empty cop cars. Headlights on, flashing lights, but quiet and empty. It was so goddamn eerie. The further I drove, the more cop cars I saw. Sometimes they were in groups of two to three, sometimes even more. That was all over the course of a few miles, in the middle of nowhere, where the biggest crime you'd get would be a DUI. It was also foggy that night, so just picture this, late night, dozens of abandoned cop cars, irk, some of them even had their doors open, with flashing lights, in eerie silence, with a layer of fog all around. It was so damn surreal, and yes, I was completely sober. I still don't know what the hell that was, if anyone here has a good guess, I'd appreciate it. My best bad guess is that it was some sort of bizarre fraternal order of police secret ritual or get-together or whatever the hell it was, somewhere in the middle of a field where no one would disturb them. It sure as hell wasn't some kind of training exercise. Not a trucker, but live in a very haunted area of the south off a road no for poltergeist activity. Have seen some shit, NGL, but something very strange that not just I, but my best friend have seen while driving towards my apartment is super spooky. Right in front of the turnoff for my apartment is an intersection, with a liquor store on one corner. Several people have been hit and died on that intersection. Also, several nearby abandoned building, including two on the corner opposite the liquor store, nearby, as well as at least one slave plantation just a little down the road. The nearby woods are full of abnormally large coyotes that some believe may have bred with local street dogs. My apartment in particular is very old, lots of murders, usually averaging one every six months, multiple deadly shootings, at least four people have drowned in the pool and there have been whorehouses and drug labs housed in the units. Police are there all the time, convicts have been known to hide in the coyotes' woods. I'd move out if I could, but alas, poor student. Especially unsettling when I found out the previous owners of my unit, a lesbian couple, just vanished one day and were never found. I'm queer. Anyways. While driving towards the intersection by my apartments with my friend at night, 
on numerous occasions, we have both seen a shadowy figure of a man crawling slowly across the road who disappears when you get close. Freaks us the duck out, isn't always there. Nothing seems to be in line of light to cause the shadow. When my friend first saw it, she actually thought there was someone in the road and was preparing to render aid. Not a truck driver but I've spent the past four years driving every day slash night for work. I was in a fairly rural part of Mississippi somewhere between Clarksdale and Greenwood, important note it's all two-lane highway the 250-mile drive home. The weather had turned pretty sour as I was leaving Clarksdale. I called my wife told her there was high wind advisories and very possible tornado threats throughout the Delta and I'd call her as soon as I made it to a safe area again. I had already been working for 14 hours when I got in the truck so I had ate dinner and grabbed some coffee to stay awake and alert. Now, if you've never driven through flat farmland at night for 100 miles, it's very fatiguing and spooky without inclement weather. I had driven maybe 30 miles out into the farmland when hail started bouncing off my truck, being a MS native I knew in July hail meant tornado. I pull off to the side, I'm in the middle of nowhere no lights to be seen no cars behind or in front of me, and start looking for the storm slash tornado I believe is approaching. I rolled the passenger window down and shined a bright flashlight off into the night. Nothing there. Turn to the driver's side and this guy has his face pushed against the glass. Grinning from ear to ear. I screamed and he was gone. I slammed the truck in drive and took off. We have all the time running cameras on our trucks. I got to the first safe place to stop and called my wife. I didn't want to scare her so I didn't mention the guy or the hail storm. I did however pull the SD card and check the cameras. I promise you this guy never popped up on my front or rear cameras. I've always played it off as my imagination. I will say I don't drive through the Delta in the dark anymore if I don't absolutely have to. In 2017 on one of my routes I had stopped at Love's gas station in Emerson, Georgia maybe 20 minutes outside Atlanta. I had been stopped for about an hour just resting and eating some fast food when a woman came knocking on my door. I opened it and she looked homeless and pretty old like in her 50s or 60s. I asked her if I could help her and she was like I think we can help each other and I said how so? And she proceeds to proposition me paying her for sex which I declined and sent her on her way. I continue to rest and eat and play on my phone for another 30 minutes when someone comes to my door and opens it and attempts to rob me in a scream mask. It was obviously the old lady from before. I push her away and lock my door and crank it up. I assumed she ran off somewhere cause I could no longer see her. After the truck was ready I pulled off and started driving. Soon cars next to started trying to get my attention and honking and pointing to the back end of my truck. I pull over and when I come to a stop I see someone jump and start running. It was that same lady. This crazy woman was hanging on to the back of my truck how I was driving. It was just a really odd experience. When I was a kid my mother was driving at night with my stepdad in the passenger seat and us three kids in the back. Apparently, I learned about it later as I was asleep, what happened was my mother and father both saw, flitting across the road from one side to the other, two glowing silhouettes of what looked like two little girls holding hands. My mother said, picture a silhouette, only instead of featureless black this was featureless bright yellow slash white, in the perfect shape of two little girls holding hands and moving across the road in their headlights. They saw them for so long that my stepdad was able to process the scene and sternly tell my mother not to steer suddenly, just to brake and not to attempt any huge steering movement. The forms reached the side of the road and faded away, our car slowed but didn't stop, and my parents continued their journey. When they related their encounter to my grandparents, whom we were visiting, they said that two young girls had been killed in a traffic accident on that same road. Not a trucker, but I drive enough around the country to have seen some weird stuff. I was driving somewhere in southwestern Mississippi near the Homokito National Forest on a foggy night. I was headed back towards home to Texas after a work assignment, when I saw a beat up old Dodge pickup going the opposite way turn around fast and start catching up. It was dark, but my headlights caught the occupants well enough to get a good look when they had passed me in the opposing lane, they appeared to be nude, large men. And they were now closing on me at a high rate of speed. I definitely didn't want to stick around and see if I could hear the deliverance banjo music, so I flipped on my spotlight, cut my other lights so I'd be less visible from behind, and punched it. Made sure I didn't take any dead end turns with the GPS, and kept it at about 90 to 120 miles per hour until I knew I'd lost them. Definitely the most overtly creepy encounter I've had. Not a trucker, but a few years ago I was driving along some random logging road in northern BC, secluded, and forested, and then this random ass chalk white guy in a black trench coat walked out into the headlights. When I say white, I mean it. Absolutely chalk white. And I was at least 20 kilometers off of the nearest major road, 
and probably hundreds away from the nearest town, in a valley between two mountains. Let's just say I backed up pretty damn quickly with my fair share of swear words. Around 50 meters away from the figure, he stepped forward, but when I yelled at it to get the duck away after I opened a window, it just walked right back into the forest. No idea what it was to this day. My dad has seen some wild things. My favorite ghost story is the time he was near an old battlefield, can't remember where, it was the middle of the night and he got off to use the bathroom. He climbed into his truck and smelled something foul and musty. He didn't think much of it and started up the engine. Once on the road, from his peripheral he could see what he describes as red eyes right above the passenger seat. Once confirmed he picked up a hitchhiking ghost, he began to panic, yelling at it to get out. He turned on his cabin lights, on the passenger seat was a dark shadow. Whatever this thing was, it began hitting his dashboard. On a long dark stretch, he finally saw a small light a gas station was on the road ahead. After what felt like hours, he pulled into the gas station, not even taking the keys from the ignition, ran inside where the gas station clerk said you okay man? You look like you saw a ghost. Once back in the cabin, the smell was gone and whatever entity followed him was no longer there. The one that stuck with him for about 20 years now is when he came up on a car that caught fire. He attempted to help, he used his fire extinguisher, water bottles, anything. He witnessed someone burn to death. My dad's had some crazy experiences on the road. I wish he would write a book. Not a truck driver but I played music for years so I saw a lot of weird stuff driving through rural parts of the country late at night, but the strangest thing I ever saw was actually not too far from where I live. I was driving to my drummer's house at around 3 a.m. after a show who lived in a somewhat more rural part of the otherwise largish city where I live, and as I'm pulling off the main road into his neighborhood, there's what appeared to be a lady waiting at a crosswalk. A bit strange for 3 a.m. but I slowed down and let her cross. As I drove through the crosswalk with her now on my right, I look at her and to this day I can't quite place what it was, but as I saw her she had some sort of disfigurement and for whatever reason it really spooked me. I'm a pretty skeptical person and I really do think either it was just the lighting with it being mostly dark, or possible this person was disfigured so she chose to run at night when there are less people around, but something about the situation has always stuck with me as whatever I saw didn't strike me as entirely human. I'm also not a truck driver, but I do drive 5 hours one way to work. My shift gets out at 11.30 pm, so if I've got a second wind, I can usually make it the whole way home. Sometimes, I have to stop to nap. So. I recall getting tired shortly before Binghamton, which from work to Binghamton proper is about 1.5 hours. This exit with a gas station I stop at frequently is about 15 minutes before this. Anyway, I stop, gas up, buy my snacks and smokes, and put up a sign in my window saying I'm okay, I just have 4 more hours of driving to do, please don't knock. I've had that happen countless times, and if I'm really out, people think I'm dead and call the cops, then I have to convince the cops that I just worked 32 hours with about 4 hours of sleep, not nodding out on heroin or whatever. God bless the people for thinking they're helping, and I don't want them to stop, hence the note lol, and I push the seat back to nap. I have an alarm set for 20 minutes this is about 1am. Next thing I know, it's 6.30am, and I'm on some back road with houses, but also fields, and I'm driving super slowly. I have no idea where I am, and how I came to be here. I don't have a lot of service bars, but I plug in my mom's address and hope directions pop up. It does, and it takes me to a highway entrance in Harpersville, New York. Okay, in about 20 minutes, I'm back on track. I don't recall how long before this story happened, but I had gotten into an accident falling asleep at the wheel. Totaled my car, got a nice eyebrow scar and nosebleed, back more ducked up than it had been, but otherwise okay. Got ducked by my insurance too. But then this happens, and it scared the duck out of me. Assuming I woke up to my alarm, it would have been like 1.30am, and I came to about 6.30am. What the hell was I doing for 5 hours? How did I not hit anything, checked out the car, it was fine, how was I driving the speed limit, because I imagine any faster or slower would have gotten the cops on me, just, how? Or was I asleep the whole time but still slept drove about 25 minutes until I really woke up? The terror allowed me to complete the drive. It was about 2 a.m. passing through rural Texas making a heavy machinery delivery. The route I was taking to this farm was through rural Texas, you know the type you see in movies that involve a farm in the middle of nowhere type stuff, a house every two miles type deal. And little did I know this route I was gonna take was about to lead to the scariest slash freakiest experience I've ever had. Hands down, period. I have LED light bars on my truck all over the front so when there's no oncoming traffic I can see for literally a mile. 
So I'm driving down the road minding my own business when I can see something off in the far distance with my lights, and the closer and closer I get, it looks more and more like a person. About 200 yards from what appears to be a person, I can make out that it's a girl because of the long hair and light colored clothes she had on. So I slow down as to not scare this girl walking in the road, and turn my brights off so I don't blind her. Truck lights are bright enough as is, so I could see her just fine without at this point. As I get closer, she turned. And when she did, my CB radio started making some slight static, and as I passed by I swear she had absolutely no face. At all. It looked like a hollow shell. I'm getting antsy just typing this shit out, and you'll see why in the next paragraph. I've never flown through gears so fast in my entire life, especially with a heavy load, and I had to be doing at least 70 before I finally came back to my senses. I called the police about it and the worst part was, they said I'm not the first person to call this in. Through the years they've had people call it in with similar descriptions of a girl walking down the road in the early morning hours, and when she turns she has a hollowed out face. The sheriff I talked to told me about an accident that happened years back, a girl in her 20s was struck and killed by a truck speeding down that road in the early morning hours, and it dragged her so far down the road, it ground her face down to nothing on the asphalt. And she was described as having long hair and wearing light colored clothes. The exact same description as I saw that night. Needless to say, I will never be taking that route again if I have another delivery. Ever. My dad knows a lot of truck drivers that would do the routes in Mexico. Dangerous and such cause of theft in certain areas. His friend talked about him driving from Sonora to if I remember correctly to Colima. There are some dangerous roads on those mountain passes but as soon as you clear it it's smooth sailing. He said before he got to the pass he stopped to get snacks and a few drinks. He said he was maybe 10 hours or so done so he could take his vacation. As he was hoping into the truck a young lady asked if he could take her just up the road to her home where her family was waiting for her. He says yes and he drives about an hour and drops her off at this large hacienda. She thanks him kisses him and tells him I will be here waiting for you when you come back and to be careful on the mountain trails as they are very dangerous. He hugs her and says he will return for a beauty like her and kisses her back. After a slow and steady pace he clears the mountains delivers and starts the trip back to Baja. He stops at that hacienda in the middle of the day and asks about the girl. The old gentleman says what does she look like? The man gets a sad expression on his face and says that was my daughter she died on those mountain passes when her bus went over the side. Needless to say it scared the hell out of him because he said that the kiss was very cold but he assumed it was the air. After 17 years of driving he retired and lives in Texas now. My dad used to drive trucks and he used to tell a story of his scariest time on the road. I'll try to do the story justice dad. So he drove trucks while I was about 5 and my brother was 3. He did so entirely to make money to take care of us, which also means that he needed to be able to actually make it home to his kids at the end of the day. He was driving up the side of a mountain that apparently genuinely resembled one ripped right from a Bugs Bunny cartoon. It spiraled up, has these rickety, flimsy metal guardrails that had smart cars been invented, they still would have not prevented even them from vaulting over the thing, let alone a semi. It was insane o'clock and my dad was super tired but he wanted to push it so he could get home faster. What happened next woke him right the duck back up, so much so that if I recall correctly, he had to actually take an hour break on the side of the road just to collect whatever was left of his sanity. He was making his way up the mountain when on his radio he hears what he swore was. Flying Frenchman. Followed by a whole bunch of hootin' and hollerin'. My dad apparently wasn't confused by the exclamation for long as mere seconds later, two full-sized, seemingly fully loaded semis came barreling down the mountain, on each side of the road. My dad had to make a quick decision, cliff or rock face. There was hardly a shoulder but it beat almost certainly crashing into the side of the mountain, so he did what he could to avoid them the best that he could and went for the bank. My dad said that he turned the wheel as quickly but carefully as he could toward the extremely narrow embankment on his, did everything he could to avoid skidding, and narrowly avoided the closest ducker. He apparently also narrowly avoided jackknifing the truck and the scariest part of all, his own semi had tipped during the procedure. All of the wheels on the one side of his truck got air and he was sure he had just tipped the truck down a bloody mountain, also these two assholes could have a ducked up game of chicken. So, the scariest thing my dad said he had ever seen while driving, a pair of flying Frenchmen. I was driving between Melbourne and Albury very late one night on the Hume FWI. For the non-Aussies, that stretch of the Hume is very wide, flat, and straight, so it's boring and hypnotic, especially driving alone at night. It was the middle of summer, so I was surprised to see little wisps of fog whipping through my headlight beams, but then the smell of burning plastic hit my nose and I realized it was smoke. Up ahead, 
There was one other car on the road, and I could just see a tiny yellow light on the back, like a candle flame. Worried, I sped up to catch this guy, and by the time I reached him his entire muffler was on fire. I flashed my lights and honked my horn, trying to get his attention. Just as I drew up alongside him, I saw him turn to look at me, and then a huge gout of orange flame burst out from under the car and licked across his driver's side window. Needless to say, he pulled over in a big hurry and I pulled over about 50 meters ahead of him. I jumped out from behind the wheel and sprinted back to him to make sure he was out of the car and safe, then back to get my phone, and called emergency services while running back to him. It was less than a minute since he'd pulled over and the entire car was a fireball. I asked if he was okay, and he said yeah, but his phone and wallet were both still inside the car. I let him use my phone to make some calls and gave him all the cash in my wallet, which wasn't much at the time, and finally continued on my way once the firefighters and ambulance arrived. Let's just say I was wide awake for the rest of my drive. I service fire equipment, so I drive a box truck, and cover parts of PA, NY, O, MD, and WV. I was in rural NWPA, returning from a service call and heading towards the interstate to go home. On the way to this customer, I saw a small pickup truck on the interstate whose right rear tire was steadily deflating. A mile or so before my exit, they pulled off to the side. I didn't stop to see if they needed help, and felt a little bad about it. As I drove down this dark, twisty road, I passed a Dodge Durango pulled over into a barn driveway. There was a person lying on the ground behind it, struggling with something. It looked like the guy was trying to change a tire or get the spare out from under the Durango. Remembering the pickup from earlier, I decided to turn around and see if he needed help. I pulled into the first driveway I saw, about one quarter mile down the road, turned around, and headed back. Halfway back, the Durango passed me, going the direction I had originally been headed. I got back to where I had seen the Durango, planning to turn around again, but as I swung into the driveway, my headlights caught a figure lying motionless in the snow. I stopped and jumped out just as the figure sat up. It was a woman, maybe in her forties, in a thin, torn black skirt and top. Her hair was must, her eye was starting to swell, she had red marks on her throat, and her lip was bleeding. I helped her up, got her into my truck, and cranked up the heat. I had taken my jacket off, so I gave it to her, and she covered her torso and arms. She didn't want to say anything. Her throat was sore, and she was badly frightened. I called 911, and they dispatched a police car. I gave her a bottle of water, and she whispered, thank you then sat with her head bowed and eyes closed. It took about 15 minutes for the police car to get there, and she stayed silent. As the car pulled in, she said, mostly to herself, he's gonna arrest me. The trooper walked up and motioned me to exit, asked her if she needed an ambulance, she declined, then asked me what had happened. I explained what I had seen. He wrote everything down, then talked to her for a few minutes. He helped her out of the truck and into his car. She quietly thanked me for coming back, because she thought that guy meant to kill her. As far as I know, she wasn't arrested. She was pretty beat up, and the trooper spoke and handled her as if she were the victim of an assault. It was almost certainly a transaction, sex or drugs, that had gone badly. I never found out what had happened. I watched the news outlets for that area for a while, but never found anything.